pretty rare photo came into my hands just recently and some of the names on the bottom of it were down here, Arthur, Arthur Nicolay, Norman Brealey, Jack Money, people from Kalgoorlie would understand that, Bill Anderson and Cyril Cornish. Uh, if you went to the movies years ago you would have seen Cyril Cornish's name on the slides. So there they are. You'd have to think they were children, wouldn't you? Nor Wing Commander Norman Brealey, <laughs> Jack Money, Bill Anderson. I think that's the Bill Anderson that went to become a captain in MMA. Um, yeah, so what a lineup, eh? Probably all about 17 or 18. 18. And so now our first speaker, um, Stan, where are you? Stan uh, did his training during uh, World War II in Texas, and uh, he's going to tell us all about that. So I don't need to introduce him because he's going to tell you all about the, uh, the things you need to know. This is the foremost side of things. The longest way up and the shortest way down. And an inch above the right eyebrow. Um, I was fortunate to be, uh, do my flying training in the United States during the war. Um, towards the end of the war, certainly the European war, over up at the end there is the crest of the British Flying Training Schools at Terror in Texas. The, uh, the British Line, the Texas Lone Star, and the Independent and the American Eagle. And that's on all the crests and information from DFT, both on the internet, which you can see any time you like, and, uh, and the, the, the motto is, uh, the seas divide and the sky unites. That's, that was there since 1941. The need for the uh, Commonwealth Air Training Plan, um, as it's distinct from other plans that in visit, was with Commonwealth countries that, that were um, they trained in Canada, Australia, India, New Zealand, Kenya, South Southern Asia, and South Africa, and then on to the prior to the uh, entry of the United States after uh, Pearl Harbor. There were two schemes in the United States, one called the Arnold Scheme, under which Chip Harvey, our friend of the year, was one of the students at that point, and Joe Ward, who was with the Tower Scheme, which was associated with the Navy, the American Navy during that time. The schools, uh, the British Blind Training Schools, were formed in the United States, and they were situ situated at Terrell in Texas, where I was, Lancaster in California, Miami, Oklahoma, Mesa in Arizona, and Clewiston in Florida and Ponca City in Oklahoma. The problems of, uh, of entry into the, uh, bringing the Royal Air Force into the United States for training was a lot of problems with the isolationist groups, in particular the, the, the Nazi Bund movement, which operated in mainly New York. If you look closely up there, you'll see the, the Nazi flag in the, in the center there. That was just prior to Pearl Harbor. And after Pearl Harbor, of course, the United States came into the war, and that's when the British Flying Training Schemes took, became operative in 1941. It actually, the implementation of the schemes came about as a Lend-Lease Agreement, which most people know about, but what you probably don't know was it was only finally paid off by the Pons in 2006 when they made the last payment of $83 million. And they've been paying all those years, those 60, 60 years of paying back the Yanks. I joined the Royal Arts Air Force in Cardington in 1943, and of course went to Lord's Cricket Ground to be kitted out, and then went to various uh, Royal Air Force establishments in the UK. Did my 12 hour flying test in Kingstown, Carlisle, before li lining up for supposedly Canada. We were kitted out, and all that kit was marked for Moncton in Canada. Uh, and when we got to New York on the Aquitania, uh, we found that. Um, or well, you're going to go to the States to, to uh, tell it for me anyway. But we went on the Aquitania, we zigzagged all the way across the North Atlantic because of the submarines that were operating there at the time. And the, it was the first of the, first of the um, repatriation ships from Europe bringing the POWs and the wounded back went to the United States. And he went up the Hudson River and the American fervor uh, I better read it. Because of that, the Yanks gave them all a wonderful reception coming up the Hudson River. American fervor and perhaps nationalism organized the lighters and the support vessels 
with the very best of big bands of the day, you know, Tommy Dawson, the whole lot, were all there, with the Barber Girls. Anybody remember the Barber Girls? And they were real. They were trapped on the, on the deck of these lighters and that. And the, the trouble was it, it caused the ship to go to some 30 degrees. <laughs> and it's just a fact. And they had to tell the lighters to go separate themselves from one side to the other so they should This is the Aquitaine, you need to be capsizing. <laughs> That's the river. We spent a few, a few weeks in New Brunswick and New Jersey and then off to Terrell. Uh, we pitted out in the United States Army Air Corps uniforms because of the isolationist problems we were having at the time still. And, uh, and the only thing that did dis distinguished us from the others were that we had a little white flash in our, our hat, after all. And there you are, we have the uh, Texas, state of Texas, and the, and the A there is just, just uh, east of Fort Worth and Dallas. Uh, it's nice and handy for weekends and things of that nature. The BFTS was staffed in the following manner. The RAF administration with the United States Army Air Corps Medical Services. Catering was by civilian caterers. They had wonderful foods that you hadn't had in England for donkey's years. Grand school with civilian lecturers. Flying school with both primary and advanced aircraft with civilian instructors in the main crop dusters and the like. Wonderful flyers intended us to teach us a few flying skills that were not in the RAF syllabus. Accommodation was the norm, with the exception of the abolition blocks. They were completely devoid of privacy. <laughs> the Yanks were always very conscious of cleanliness, and I recall that the toilet pedestals were in line in the centre of the block and serviced with hot water. The trick was to creep up behind the bloke on the, and trip the lever to give him a nice warm hot reception. <laughs> <laughs> Having no divisions was easy for the cleaners, they just washed down with the hoses, but of course. They okay, so um, keen on perpetuating the BFTS uh, in terror that this is a current uh, showing on their website showing events happening in, is recently in September. They've kept up the association with the Royal Air Force and, and the BFTS Association in England for 60 years and they just perpetuate that because they really took it us to heart. Weekend passes were earned and students had to reach grade that warranted this. I always seemed to get by and was always looking forward to the dances that were held in Elm Street in Dallas, where Kennedy was assassinated late, years later. That was great and soon came to accept the time, the time the Yanks were always keen to sing their national anthem, which was okay with me. But all five verses, you know, they're so nationalistic they, could, they wouldn't be content with one verse, they had all five. <laughs> and the locals organised many dances and home stays in both Terror and Dallas, Dallas and whilst the Terror with other family excursions when we were in New York and there were girls in abundance. They just threw themselves at us. We had to fight them off. <laughs> Most pilots found it very difficult to come to terms with the age-old problem of race at the time in Texas. I got in a bit of a scene. Uh, it was, was, of course, south of the Mason-Dixon line, which literally separated the north of the USA from the south. To some extent, it still occurs. Public transport was not available to us at Terrell. We had each rise to Dallas some 35 miles away. I found the grand school training was a piece of cake compared with what we experienced in the UK, tooting and late in Torquay, and with a lecture were very formal, sometimes quite hard to follow, not so the Yanks. In the early years, they'd engaged someone from the Walt Disney Organization in Hollywood, and from then on with all visual presentations of all subjects, particularly meteorology and navigation. In fact, these, these uh, pictures of things flying up up friends and, and all, all, all the rest of those wonderful Meteorological names we seem to escape in these days, but it was very, very simple. They, they, it was in a cartoon form, and everybody accepted it. Flight training both Stephen and Texan was a bit of a breeze, with the easy attitudes of instructors, always going out of their way to explain their understandings of certain manoeuvres, etc. Uh, that, by the way, was a book that was printed about 10 years ago, and uh, it outlines all the different schemes in the United States, and written by a professor at Dallas University. The civilian instructors uh, were just as they you see him there, and uh, they were wonderful folks. Mine was just not unlike him anyway. And there you are, there's yours truly. One of the shortest on the course. That was the uniform that the United States Army Air Corps used, as distinct from our own little uniform. But um, they graduated in the United States Army. There were several, there weren't that many. Uh, US Army people flying with us at the time. 
uh, when they graduated, they wore both the Royal Air Force wings and the United States Army wings on the part of the breast. There's a flight line in Terrell in Texas. And there's your Australian front of a 86 Texel, otherwise a half. I've been back to several years, three years, both in the United States, at least tw twice there, and in the United Kingdom. But in the United States, they're absolutely flat out trying to forth cement the relationships between the RAF and Australia and, the, and, the, and their own country. They go to extreme lengths to put on shows which would, um, which would be the envy of a lot of people in their own little neck of the woods. Um, the only remembered estate in the cemetery in Terrell is a full military service, not just to bring it together people for remembrance day, there's a full military band and the whole lot, the whole caboodle, playing the last post in the river valley, but they just didn't, uh, didn't stem on anything, skimmed on anything. They were wonderful days for a young person of 19 years of age at the time. The aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and there's a couple of Texans. Uh, all schooling stopped and number one BFTS was disbanded on the 8th of September 45. The students of course is 25, 26 and 77 were given a little Philip before flying ceased. We were allowed to fly either the Spearman or the Texan for a couple of hours doing whatever we wished including low flying. As you all know one of the great problems of flying over water is the height factor. Terrible happened in many such lakes around and two of our students were killed in the last week of school doing just that. One of them had been selected to play the bagpipes in the farewell to the Terrell Parade. So it was a very sad ending to it. And back to the UK, post-war RAF, went by train to New York and Fort Hamilton, sailing there with Queen Elizabeth, that founded later and burnt in Hong Kong. We had plenty of time to think about our future in the Royal Air Force on that four-day trip. An incident aboard the trip one night, as rumour had gone around that the ship had had a kangaroo court, had been held resulting in an NCO being judged for his cooperation with the Japanese whilst as a POW in the Pacific Islands Regiment. He never got back to Blighty. We were required to take another EFTS at Kingstown, Carlisle to get rid of the influence of flying instruction we had gained whilst in Texas, and then on to Turtle in Shropshire for a further course on harvest. At that time I had an invitation to join my sister in Australia, who was there as a war, a war bride, with a lot of wangling and that's become redundant and became a Soviet civilian once again. Strangely, as a group, we'd had an invitation to join BISC Australian pilots. What a life changing experience that would have been if I then had made decisions that could not be changed. Left for Australia in the old ex trip ship Dorsetshire and arrived at Oz in Fremantle in January of 1949. Statistics of the Commonwealth Air Training Plan and the Empire Training Team, Canada trained 130,000 students. As and as a comparison, Southern Rhodesia and South Africa, 33,000. The BFTS scheme at all six schools totaled only 18,000. So you can see the USA involvement was not that great. Although we scored the following awards and medals. A Victoria Cross, three Air Force Crosses, four Distinguished Flying Medals, and 38 Distinguished Flying Crosses. <coughs> Chip Harvey and Joe Ward, of course, trained under the same scheme. Uh, I've mentioned them before, but one under the Arnold scheme or one under the Tower scheme. I would like to thank Brian Turner who composed the graphics for today, presentation. All I had to do was find a few photographs from yesterday, yesteryear rather, and with my brain top here became quite chuffed with the outcome. He is mean, quite aware, it's quite awe-inspiring, and when it comes to putting the whole thing together, every month for us, all hands together again for Thank you. Oh, sorry, the last one, I think. That was an aircraft um, that we didn't use too much at Terrell, um, the Baltic Valiant, because it was called a Baltic Vibrator. They actually thought a bit, so they, they didn't use them after a while. It was a cow of an aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chips would know because he probably would, it's a cow of an aircraft. I mean, I can have another look at it for that. <laughs> Uh, that's the cemetery of Terrell in Texas where we lost 21 <coughs> students and it's looked after by the War Graves Commission and the local people who are wonderful people. Don't ever get the impression that Americans are like they see on TV, they're not. They really are wonderful people. And there you are, back in the saddle. And there you are, yesterday and today. <laughs>
Thank you.